Hey guys, we're here with Justin who finished first place at the YCS Niagara VFP qualifiers uh, with Retro V. So, congrats to you. Uh, what are, what's your thoughts on this deck with the new format? Uh, I think after the Boundless, the deck got stronger. Uh, I think it's like a, it moved up a couple spots as far as like tier list goes. And I think at least in this short format until Rage of the Abyss, it's really good. And after that, I don't know. We have to may have to take some time to see how that settles before we can judge how this deck is. But awesome. right now, it's a really good choice. Awesome. Well, let's get right to the list then. Okay. So the engine is pretty like normal ratios. Um, as you can see, three Cadhawk, three Rampengu, uh, three SBT Laura, uh, three Elder. And then we have our one ofs, like uh, these for the Spiritual Beast. Some people don't play this, but I think this card is really important to play, especially when you build the best deck, because you need non destruction removal, and this lets you bounce, and you can, like, um, SS off once per turn, so you can sometimes use it multiple times per turn, and it's a really important removal tool. And then we have our like tamers. I, I don't play Zephyr and Pilica because it's basically just another copy of Laura. I mean, you can if you want, but I think it just is essentially a brick in the deck when you're trying to, uh, um, when you're looking at your opening hands of what you want to draw as like the best as possible. I think you only want need one graveyard revival. Um, then we have uh, three inheritance. Um, you see, before the prosperity limit, I think you could maybe play a different ratio, but now you definitely need three of this. Um, it adds consistency. Unfortunately, alone, it's it's doesn't it's not a starter, but it's uh, helpful to do your combos and one steeds. Um, it's possible that if we move into Rage of the Abyss format and this needs to turn into more of a mid range deck instead of a full combo deck, you may play like two of these, so that if you get like a hit with Furas, you can. Just do like a double stretch of steed or something, and then pass on the uh, like a softer end board. And then I play the the Nem I play I main deck a uh, flag and quarter. I side Protos. Um, before I was main decking Protos, but um, there's some new combo lines that you can actually um, use with Corridor that helps you play through stuff like Nibiru. And and I think that if you're playing blind into a deck, that corridor is actually a lot more useful right now. Um, especially once you become a lot more um, comfortable with the deck, then I think you can actually just side the Protoss and mid-deck the corridor. And it's actually um, been very good as far as hopping events have gone. And then I play uh, three Itelli. Uh, this is definitely, this is probably the most important extender of the deck. And I play one prosperity now. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's limited, but it's fine. Like if you draw it, it's good. It's uh, you can just uh, you always only go for three because if you go for six, you're gonna lose in the grind game. Um, but this card came up a lot even at the VIP qualifier. Every time I drew that, I think I was winning the game. And then for non-engine, uh, we have like a three shifter. Obviously, this is a shifter deck. If you don't play this card. Well, <laughs> it's going to be a tough time out there. Uh, then we have, and then I'm on hand traps because uh, I actually think hand traps are slightly better now that, especially since Apple was banned. Um, before I was playing board breakers, but as soon as Apple was banned, I switched to a hand trap uh, heavy build with like Nibiru and stuff, and it seems a lot more effective. Uh, the only board breaker I play is Book of Eclipse, and the reason I play Book of Eclipse is because if, um, you know, this deck can sometimes. Um, hurt when you get in the brood, but this lets you flip your monsters face down and you can still fusion summon, so it's not really a big deal if you have this and you get hit with the the uh, Nibiru. And then I have three Nib in the main as well. Okay. So how many cards is that in the main? Uh, this is a 42 card deck. Um, I think the 42 is fine. I never, I rarely brick, so I don't see a problem with having that many cards. Uh, moving on to the side deck. Um, for the event, I had a three cross up, but I oh sorry I um, once you get if you're new to the deck, this is definitely necessary. But as you get more comfortable with uh, uh, the deck, I really think that you don't need cross up. You can start to really learn a lot of lines and ways to play the deck around Nibiru, which is the main deck. That main reason people played this was to deal with Nibiru, but especially is that they have Book of Eclipse. Um, um, and once you become really comfortable with the deck, you can cut this. I would actually switch this for a uh, solemn judgment. I think having the ability to stop board breakers is much more important uh, right now. Cracking? And I play Cowboy for time since it's the only extra deck time card we can play. 
Um, and because of extra exp or side X space limitation story, I only have two cosmic, and it was fine every time I decided it in, it was what I needed. Uh, three dogwood, also a powerful time card, but it's also really good against um, like any combo deck. Even uh, like a lot of game twos, I would have this in against heavy combo decks, and I would win just because I would get so much life, it'd buy me two extra turns and be enough to win the game. And I play uh, three Bestials, this is really good against G-Bell. And uh, if you're really uh, familiar with the intricate lines of Virtual Beast, you can actually, this can actually help you combo um, in some situations. And then I have my Protoss, and then just two Mouse Army. And then for the extra deck, I have our Colossus and our uh, Flame Banshee. Um, they're pretty normal. And then I have, this is important for breaking boards. Um, here's another example of non-destruction removal. A lot of people don't play this card, and maybe before the ban list, when Snake is the best deck, I could see that, but if you build the best deck, I think having non, as much non-destruction removal as possible is like pretty necessary. Um, I had Pit Knight early as like the sort of all-link two. I think I would, I mean, this came up like once or twice, but I think um, this, slot was replaced with Anima, and I think we put Anima back in, because especially going second, Anima helps you to uh, play through boards. It lets you get to the SP a lot quicker, and um, this is not like completely necessary. It is a nice like extra option, but I still don't think we need it. And I will say the same thing for IP. Um, after playing this deck for, since the support came out in Terminal Revenge, I not, not, not like I'm sort of hit or miss on IP. Um, you can definitely try like if this could be IP or you could play a, another one would be like a link spider or a cross sheep basically anything you can link on a Nibiru token off you can play instead of IP um, then, I, then I just play the one and one for the the which would be sponsor some people double up on these but I think that's another thing like if you're newer to the deck that is um, something you would probably like to do is play like two of this or two of this for example but if you, once you become like really fam familiar and comfortable with the deck I think you can do just fine with um, like one in each of those and then here's an Alti Guy Pelio, Alti Pelio, usually this is just for dumping probably from the deck but sometimes it does come up where you need the, um, it's unaffected when it attacks, sometimes it uh, is really important against like Desiree or something and then we just have two Nochi and two Alti Catahawk. And yeah, awesome. Well, that is. <laughs> thank you for the deck profile. Congrats again. Any last shout outs? Shout outs. Uh, shout outs to like, all my friends that help me test all the time. Um, it's really helpful with trying to figure out different tech options in the deck. Um, shout outs to EDYGO. He's uh, made the Virtual Beast uh, spreadsheets and he's made a lot of videos. Um, so his spreadsheet is like a great thing. If you have, if you really want to like learn this deck, you can like try to memorize all the combos that spreadsheet. And like once you get to that point, it's it's sort of to the point where you don't have to worry about the cards like a cross out um, in the deck. For example, you can just sort of play and know exactly how everything works. Um, but yeah, that was uh, awesome. Well, that was a clean nation as well for letting us come. But thank you again. Take care.